Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Zero Hour, the anime conventions podcast. Today on our show, we will be talking about Capcom 2019. Here on our show, we have our East Coast Con representative, Lee May. Hi everyone! And Lee May will be talking about her experience at Capcom. So uh, yeah, let's. Uh, where do we start? So what drew you in to come back to Capcom? Yeah, so Capcom this year is still the same location I believe it's always been at, at the Gaylord at National Harbor. And so this year I was able to actually carpool with a friend down there. And so we decided to go for the whole weekend. So we actually traveled there on day zero, on the Thursday before the con. And how long was that road trip down? So our trip down was pretty long, but not as long as I thought it would be, I think. With traffic, most of it was honestly New York City traffic. If it wasn't for New York City traffic, it wouldn't be this long. But we left in the morning, like around, well, not morning, it was like 12 noon. And then we got there in the evening, so like around dinner time. That sounds, so sounds like, like about six a, yeah, so like maybe a yeah, five, six hour drive, and you didn't have any weather problems going on the way down. Thank goodness, no weather problems, just traffic. Okay. But there was some rain, but you know, not like snow or anything. Yeah, you didn't run into any thunder snow because I know a couple of times we went to Katsukon, we'd had like weather problems like going in and out. Yeah, of course. Like there was actually snow during that weekend, but luckily not on one of the travel days. I think it snowed on Saturday. Okay, so it was like uh, just light snow, like just sort of just regular snow. Yeah, I don't think it was anything bad. Like people were still photo shooting outside, to be honest, on Saturday, so I don't think it was that bad. It was just like a little bit of snow. Okay, so that's not a big deal because I remember the time when um. We went to Katsukon, and, like, people who are flying in from the east, from, like, the west coast to the east coast, their flights got canceled. It was that bad. Yeah, like, I remember once, one year for Katsukon when we went, um, like, my flight, like, I didn't have any problems going there, but on the way back, it got canceled, so I got stuck there until, like, Tuesday, I think. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, luckily, no, that problem this year, so that was all good. All right, so you arrived day zero, so, um, what was the... And did you do anything on day zero? Did you do cosplay? Yeah, so on day zero, they had no official programming unless you count the pre registration and registration pickup. But I did cosplay that day with my friend, and it was actually Valentine's that day. So a lot of people at the con were cosplaying OTPs and things like that, which is cute to see. Oh, cute. Yeah, and they also had some unofficial events. Like, for example, they had this great Gatsby themed party that wasn't run by the con, but it was. I forgot which community, I'll look it up later and let you know, but it was a community that ran the event at Capsicon when they had the area, you know, on the lower level by the atrium where they have the fountains? Yeah, I saw your photo of that. I was like, wait, is this like the Capsicon ballroom dance? Because that would be an amazing place to have the ballroom dance. No, no, it wasn't the ballroom. So it was actually an unofficial event on day zero that they did a great gas like 1920s theme. Oh, I would so been all up in there. Yeah. It was super cool because it was like, you know, pretty casual when they're like, oh, we'd like you to dress up in Great Gatsby or 1920s theme, but if not, that's fine. Like, it's just an unofficial event for people to hang out on day zero. It was really cute because they had people playing music, DJing, and stuff like that. People were dancing. Uh, again, because I do like a lot of vintage events, I would be so about that lifestyle. <laughs> I know. Like, hopefully they'll bring it back next year, too, and still do, like, if not 20s, another, like, period-themed dance party on day zero. I think that's cool. Indeed. So there's some people who are cosplaying and reimagining characters in 20s wear, and then some people were just wearing, like, 1920s flapper dresses and flapper-inspired looks, which is really cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would, would have so brought my... Because I have a Meowstick um, Pokemon outfit that's inspired by the 1920s. Like, oh, That'd right. be epic. That'd be so perfect for that. Yeah. And so I, I thought that was fun. I actually didn't even know that was happening until I got there, and then we heard people talking about it, and we're like, oh, let's go check it out. And so my friend and I were not wearing 1920s, we were wearing actually more like 50s inspired outfits, but it was like, whatever, <laughs> we can go. It was, it's not like a strict dress, but it's fine. Hey, it's vintage inspired, like y'all are welcomed. <laughs> it's still vintage, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, we did actually, um, Mahayat and Avion from Miraculous Ladybug. Oh, nice. Which I've been wanting to cosplay for like years, literally, so finally glad we got to do something. Oh, and also, in, you know how in National Harbor, right by the con, there's all those restaurants and things, like when you walk out toward, like, past where parking is. Yeah, yeah, they have some pretty neat restaurants out there. Yeah, so a lot of places actually had not just, like, Valentine's theme menu items, things like that, but also be decorated, like, all these lights above the streets had, like, change in color lights, and you know the Ferris wheel? Mm-hmm. It lit up with, like, a heart shape. Aw, that's adorable. But they had... 
really cute, like, Valentine's themed stuff. And then my friend and I did, like, their pre sex menu at one of the restaurants there. That was, like, a, a Western American style one. They had, like, a prefix menu for, like, two, where you could have, like, multiple course meal, basically, and dessert. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so that was really cool. And I think a lot of our restaurants in the area were also doing similar things with, like, specials. Yeah, there's just a couple of restaurants I liked out there. I think um, if I had to choose my favorite, uh, there was one that was, like, a, it was kind of like an Irish pub type of thing. And I oh, remember, cool. I think I heard about that one. I didn't go, but I think my friends went to that one. Yeah, that's one of my favorite restaurants out there. And th- there's also, like, it's more like a casual, quick service dining type thing, but there was like a sandwich place that I really liked when I used to go to Capsicon. That's epic. I definitely want to check out more restaurants in the future, because in the past, I think I just stayed at the con and just ate con food. But, like, honestly, there's so many cool restaurants nearby the con. Might as well go out. And oh, it'll absolutely. probably be less crowded, too, you know what I mean, versus in the con where everyone's going. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that was basically day zero, and then obviously I picked up my batch on day zero, too. And it was pretty chill, because there's no, like, the convention floor is not really open yet, other than registration. But I actually did get to meet some of my favorite artists that night, because they were actually at CapCon for the first time from the West Coast. They're actually from, like, California and Seattle. Mm-hmm. And so that was really awesome being able to meet them, and it was pretty easy to find them, too, in one of the con areas, you know, like, because nothing's really happening at the con yet, but just by the stairs, entering, like, near the ballroom. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and then, of course, day one was surprisingly a lot, well, not surprisingly, but a lot busier than day zero, just because I think some people do come into the con on day one in the morning versus day zero before. Because mm-hmm. I could notice a significant difference in the crowds, actually, from Thursday to Friday and again from Friday to Saturday, with Saturday being the biggest and busiest day. All right, let's start off with uh, day one. So how did you uh, kick off your day one? Yep, so day one. So day one on Friday, I think the first thing I did was I got breakfast from, you know, the Starbucks, not Starbucks, but they sell Starbucks in their little cafe thing on that first floor. The line was insanely long, though, (laughs) because everyone, I think, was trying to get coffee or whatever, but they're getting breakfast stuff. And then I actually checked out the... Boku no Hero photo shoot. I didn't cost a Boku no Hero, but I wanted to check it out. How huge and was it? It was huge. Ooh, I'll believe that. No, like, I'm telling you, like, I was kind of scared. Actually, when I thought, I was like, wait, that's got, is this the shoot? And I realized, oh my god, I think it is. I kid you not, the entire atrium level, I swear, it was just all Boku no Hero. Wow. Yeah, like, I'm actually not surprised. <laughs> like, literally from where that cafe, like, where breakfast was, you know, where that cafe thing is, and where the national pastime sports bar is, all the way to, like, you know, the whole area of the fountains, to the back area where the exit goes to go outside. Like, literally that entire floor. That is insane. But at the same time, I know there's a lot of gain in popularity for Boku no Hero. Yeah, I know. I Like, I knew it was popular, but I, know it was, I didn't know it was this popular. You know what I mean? Like, those first time that I've seen it with that many people, like, all in one place. It was, it was crazy. But I was, like, standing way, way back, like, way back, like, kind of right by where the exit was, where you go outdoors. And I was just like, oh my god, they're everywhere. But it was really cool, but I have no idea how they were taking pictures of There's so many people. Yeah, with that group like that, oh, like, how'd you get everyone together, you know? Like, how'd you do, like, all your, like, okay, this is this group, this is that group, this is this pairing? It, honestly, I have no idea how they would have done, like, the full group picture of everyone. You know, like, oh, everybody, I have no idea how they would have done that. Even things like, oh, all the hero academy students, or, like, oh, all the villains, it would be, like, massive boards of people. But also you could tell when they're calling different characters, like, oh, all, all my or whatever. Like, you could tell people like, from the back of trying to squeeze their way to the front. It's just, like, a struggle. People have to be like, oh, wait, maybe there's someone trying to get to the front, you know, where you do pictures. But I was like, wow, that's so many people. It was cool, though. It was, it was a cool shoot. I just it was kind of, like, in the back. I couldn't even take any pictures, to be honest, though, because even standing up on a ledge, there were just so many people. It was really hard to see unless you were near the front. Hmm. And then after that, I think I went to the Artist Alley to check that out. And that was really cool. They have so many artists there. And they actually had a really good mix of not just fan art, but also original art, too. Oh, that's which nice. I'm really happy to see. You know, there's someone there who did, like, watercolor paintings. There's someone else who made, like, handmade jewelry and things like that. So they had a wide variety of artists there. And, of course, like, a ton of fan art. Not just anime, but also you see things from, like, Marvel and DC and also uh, Voltron and other things too oh that's cool yeah and then after that i believe i also had a photo shoot i was cosplaying as wedding hanukkah 
Yeah, yeah I saw the photos. So was that with Samiko uh, photography? With who? Uh, Samiko. Yeah, Samiko photography. Yeah, yeah, it was a Samiko photo photography. Yep. Yeah. I love and, them. Uh, we found like actually it was good because we went downstairs to the pool level. You know, in the hotel and they were near the pool level because we heard that that was a nice place to shoot that's not as crowded. But I think everyone heard about it because it was actually a lot of people shooting there. But we didn't have to wait that long before it freed up, and then we were able to snag some shots down on that wall, like right by the elevators on the pool level. It's like a solid, like white and black wall. Yeah, I got some photos there. By any chance, did people like um were? <laughs> did you have to deal with people coming in and out of the elevator? Because I know I was like one of those elevator people when I used to do caps, and I was like, oh, sorry, I hate to run into your photo shoot. Yeah, no, there were some people who were, were coming in and out, but it actually wasn't that that many people. There were some people coming in and out. Mm-hmm. There were some people who were there being like, oh wait, can I shoot after you? It's like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> like waiting, like you know, by the side. So it's it's nice. It's quieter, and the lighting's actually not bad there. Yeah, what I like about Catscon is like every anywhere you can go, it's like it's like a perfect place for photography because you get the natural light coming in from the atrium, and then you have like all that light like in that um, white space by the um, gym. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then there's also usually like you can find like a nook or cranny to take a quick shot into, like in some of the hallways, like even the con center. Mm-hmm. Especially all the windows, you know, because there's a lot of windows in that con center too, mm-hmm. in the hotel. Yeah. And then after that, I changed to something more comfy because, you know, like the wedding Hanukkah is fun and all, but it's like not the most comfortable outfit just because, you know, you have all stuff going on. So I switched to Hanayo in the angelic choir outfit because that one's like super comfy. Which uh, outfit? So, oh, yeah, the choir outfit where it looks like yeah, it's, it's like a Christmas, Christmas type thing. One. It looks mm-hmm. kind of like the caroling with the snowflakes. Mm-hmm. So I took that one, even though it's after Christmas, but whatever. You know, it still feels like winter, you know, in February. It's winter it's outside, so might as well. I know, honestly, it's still even like. In February, I thought it'd be warmer than New York, but it was still cold in, over in National Harbor. But I switched to that and actually went to the Akuda concert, which was exciting. But before a concert, I really wanted to get food, and I didn't have that much time, so I just kind of went to that. You know that grab and go spot they have in the hotel? Yeah, yeah. Where they like snacks and some homemade food. So I just grabbed like a burger from there and ate it really fast, and I ran to the concert. I missed the first song, I think, but I made it for the rest of it. Oh, how did and it, it go? It was amazing. Like, it was my first time seeing Akuda perform. Like, I've met her before, but I've never seen her in concert. And her stage presence is amazing. Like, she didn't have the whole band with her, like, the whole Daisy code, so she performed everything solo. Okay, um, I'm not really quite familiar with this, um, this, um, performance artist. Can you just give us a little bit more background yeah, on this? Um, so Akuda, I think, is most famous for her modeling work in the Gothic Lita Bible and Clara Magazine. Um, she models for Alice and the Pirates, um, Putumayo, Algonquin, Sex Pot Revenge, uh, even Emily Temple Cute, like a lot of fashion brands. And so she's really popular modeling for that, but she also is part of a visual K group, Diza Code, where she's the lead singer for. And actually, her drummer in that band wears Lolita fashion all the time, which is super cute. Like, he's a Lolita. And that's awesome. Nice. And she, I believe the most popular work she did was she did one of the theme songs for Black Butler. Okay. Her band did. Diza Code did, yeah. And so it's visual K, and she has a really distinctive punk style. And was kind of like well the only like one of the few like women who's a lead singer for a visual K band because most of those groups are like male fronted. Yeah, I've been noticed that for some yeah. um, for quite some time. Yeah, and so she also pulls off a lot of looks. So she does Lolita fashion looks. She does OG style, punk style visual K. Like she does like some theater even. So she has a lot of she can pull off a lot of different looks and is really popular for modeling. Oh, that's amazing to like be that versatile and also I sing know. in front of band. I know, she's amazing. So I've been a big fan, actually, since I first saw her in Goth Lita Bible when I was, like, I think in middle school. Like, it was, like, my first time seeing her Goth Lita Bible in Borders Bookstore, I remember. I had seen her. And the first copy of Kara magazine I bought was one that had her on the cover. Oh, nice. But she was really talented. Like, I was very impressed with her performance. And she got really the crowd going, too. Like, she taught, like, the crowd, like, a dance to do along with the song she was singing. It was really cute. She's like, no, you have to dance with me. And she made an effort to speak English the whole time, too. Like, she was telling us at the beginning, like, uh, or after one of the songs, she was saying, I'm trying to speak in English. I'm sorry, my English is no good, but, like, I'll try my best because I'm in America and I want to connect with the American fans. Oh, that's nice of her. It was really cool. She was telling us that she went to the zoo, and she thought it was amazing because the Smithsonian in D.C. she went to before the con. And she said she thought it was the coolest thing ever because the zoo was free. And she was like, I can't believe it's free. <laughs> it's amazing. The zoo is free. It was super cute. She was just super excited to be here, and she said it was, like, amazing to be able to perform you know, at the con. And I could tell she really loved her fans, too, because after the concert, okay, so after her concert, they also had Lentana concert, 
which is another visual of Cable. Cool. So Lantana performed Rapper there, and it was actually their U.S. debut. Like, their first U.S. concert was at Casabon. Excellent. And so that was them after, and that was, that was really cool, too. And then, um, after that, I did have a Lita concert a bit early, because I planned to meet up um, with a friend I hadn't seen forever. And so we met up really quick, and she had cost, like, Ren, actually, so it took some cute, like, Ren and Honey Olympics. Oh, that's adorable. And then I wanted to go and to go to the Akita autograph and fan meeting, which was, like, after all the concerts were over. The line was really long, but totally worth it, worth it, because Akita was super down-to-earth and nice, and she talked, like, when you went out, you know, finally you're just online, right, you go, you can buy merch and her sign things, too. They didn't bring all the merch, some of the merch people there, uh, which I thought was unfortunate, because I feel like a lot more people would have bought, you know, more stuff to get signed immediately. So I think they only bought a select few merch and get, like, a CD there or, like, a poster there, but they didn't have, like, her fashion photo books or lookbooks there. They didn't have, like, her stickers there and some of the postcard artwork. But I feel like if they had brought, like, all that stuff with them, people would have bought it, you know what I mean? Yeah. To get the autograph. Like, I would have honestly gotten more stuff to get autograph, but uh, because they didn't have that much stuff there, I just got a poster and I got, I didn't get the CD, I got the CD separately, like, on Sunday at the con, but I got the poster and then I had to autograph that. And it was really cool, be- and I got the t-shirt too, which I did not have to autograph, but it was awesome meeting her because she was super down there, she made an effort, you know, to speak English with all the fans too. And then she saw my Eda bag, and she likes Dino Ace. Oh, that's awesome. I freaked out. It was crazy. I did not know she liked Dino, but she recognized, she was like, oh, Dino Ace. And I was like, oh my god, I love Dino so much. She was like, oh, me too. She was like, oh, me so much. She knew that it would be cute. It was amazing. And then she said, you know, that it's very popular in Japan. And she didn't know people in America liked it. I'm like, I wish it was more popular in America, to be honest. <laughs> I love Dino so much. So that was really, really cool that she knew it. And then, and then everyone who, like, bought merch was able to get a picture with her, too. Oh, that's cool. And she was super cute. And she even posted pictures that she took with the fans. And she had, I don't know if it was her agent or assistant, but one of the people who was with her was taking pictures for her. And then she ended up posting those pictures to her Instagram, too. Oh, and, nice. Like, with all her fans, which was really cute. Mm-hmm. But definitely, like, if Akira's at any cons of the guests, definitely recommend going out to her, her, her concerts or, like, any panels or events that she runs. Like, it's really nice to see someone who's a model and a singer who's also still really fun-loving and down-to-earth. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And she was also, you know, playing around with the photos with the fans. He was being like, it wasn't just like, you know, uptight photos. were like really fun and silly photos too. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I think that was it. Because after that, I think I was really exhausted. <laughs> Honestly, for um, Oh, yeah, especially a day yeah. after that, a day like just doing concerts back to back and also doing a fan meeting for you. That's definitely like a lot of things you've done there. It was a lot. It was a lot. So I was like, wow. I am trying my ears were like ringing. You know, it's in the concert and loud music. It's like, Oh gosh, my ears are ringing still. I need sleep. But then day two was next day. It was another another fun filled day also at Katsukon. All right. How do you start off day two? So day two was actually a lot of photo shoots, which actually was kind of surprising because my friend and I had our Aldoa Zero cosplays and we had a photo shoot on the schedule, but then last minute we had someone else join our group who whose friends who were supposed to do it with her, like, couldn't make it to con, so we, like, invited her, like, hey, you can join us, we're doing it too, like, come and join us. So, after that, we also, like, last minute had another shoot, so she could be included too, so all three of us could shoot together. So it was a lot of, like, shooting inside, outside, a lot of outside, it was really cold. I was just, like, this is freezing, but I shouldn't complain because wearing, like, you know, long sleeves and a lot of petticoats and hoop skirts and stuff, a lot of layers, but it was still cold. And then, also taking pictures with other people, you know, like, checking out cosplayers and all the other stuff that was around. And uh, let me tell you, we never got anywhere near the gazebo. Oh, wow. The gazebo that day was, I feel like everyone was in line for that. Everyone like, has gazebo thirst, I swear. It's weird, though, because I think like every year, I'm like, but every year, is this getting old? I don't know. <laughs> like, I'll be honest, I think the gazebo's great, but I don't think it fits every cosplay, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I feel that, too. The lighting there is not that good either, because mm-hmm. you're like backlit, you know, and you could wear like a zebra faces when you're facing out, the windows are behind you, so I feel like the lighting isn't really ideal either, unless you have good lighting equipment, like if a photographer has, you know, things that will take out the backlighting if you don't want the backlighting, but anyways, we were just like, yeah, we're not waiting in line for that. <laughs> yeah, ain't got no time for that, because you don't know how, how long people are going to be, be yeah. or how territorial I people are. I feel like fighting over, like I saw some people were like... You know, when someone jumps in, like, no, but I was in line first, and like, oh, wait, just really quick, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is like... Guys, it's costly. It should be fun, not, like, territorial. Exactly. 
Like, let's chill, please. I'm sure you can get good pictures, like, next to that on the other side. Or share it. Like, you know, just take the shots, like, you know, you can totally sh- share it, too. I mean, like, half the gazebo. You know, sharing is caring, you know? And, like, um, the gazebo. <laughs> I, we were lucky because I did like a love live group a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. It was um, it was like the maid outfits from like the third single. I can't pronounce it for the life of me. Uh, we were lucky because we went into the cherry blossom ballroom, and the panel room was totally empty. There wasn't the, uh, wasn't anything going on there, and because it had a stage right there, we did like okay, this is us like just chilling behind the scenes, just idols like right before they go on stage, and plus you get the background of the cherry blossom ballroom. And also just us just kind of like just looking like we're about to perform on stage. And staff is pretty chill with it. It's like, That's guys, amazing. think outside the box. You don't always need a gazebo in the background of your photos, you know? I know. There's a lot of things you can do, too. Like, outside, they got some good pics, too. Like, for El Zero, they got some good photos. Outside by the water, which looked very nice. And then mm-hmm. inside, like like you mentioned, too, there's other things like by the ballroom. Or even in our place, too, is we found a really nice brick wall, like, kind of near where that gift shop is with, like, touristy stuff for National Hardware, there's, like, this really nice, solid brick wall that works well for pictures, too. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's, like, really versatile. And then, also, like, after El Nuevo Zero, then I changed to Sango for Inyasha because I was in a group. A lot of people ditched last minute, though, which is kind of annoying. Because uh, it was, like, a day of, and people were like, oh, my God, our Inyasha dropped. And, oh, my God, someone else dropped. Those are things dropped. So we were like, oh, no. But we made it work. It was fine. We had fun. It was chill. We went outside to shoot. It was freezing, though, because I was wearing sandals. Oh, uh, so yeah. My feet felt like ice. Like, literally, after shoot when we went inside, I was, like, sitting, covering my feet with Sushomaru's fur thing. <laughs> you know, the fluffy fur thing? And we're just sitting there, like, yep, I'm just going to, like, hide my feet and <laughs> warm up. And then someone was going to go get hot chocolate, but apparently the line was, like, insanely long. Um, so we chilled there. And then I actually met um, someone else at the con who also is Ellie's download so far. Oh, wow. And that was really cool. That was actually, that happened at the time, is why I mentioned it now, because when I was staying there, someone came to ask if I was, they recognized me, and they were like, oh yeah, I know you because of the Spoonie thing. I'm like, what? And it was so cool, because she was super nice, and we, like, had Spoonie bonding time, and it was great. Aww. And it was really cool, because, like, I love the overlap with the Spoonie and cosplay community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's awesome, and it was just like, yay! And then people were really cool, and then we, like, chilled, and had snacks, you know, because I had, like, coffee with me and stuff. <laughs> he was, like, sharing snacks. Oh, what kind of coffee did you have? I feel like every con, you gotta share coffee with someone, you know? Like, mm-hmm. coffee game or no coffee, you just gotta, like, spread the coffee for the cons, too. And then, after that, I switched before dinner to, of course, Dino Ace, I need a coffee giant at some point. Every year at CosCon, every year I've ever gone, even the year when it only went one day, mm-hmm. I've always cosplayed Asian from Dino Ace. Oh, yeah, that's right, because of that National Harbor um, burger place. I thought, why? The first year I was there, I had no idea that was there. <laughs> the first year I was there, I had no idea. I just wanted to cosplay Daya. And then I'm like, oh my god, I've cosplayed every year. It's like my thing now. And so, of course, I've been Asian again. And that was fun. And I got to meet up with one of my friends, Grace, who's this amazing scan later. She does all like Dojin simulations for Team Krage. And she has the best Daya Eat a Bag ever. Oh, so, nice. we were like, had Eat a Bag, little mini Eat a Bag meet up. And then we had dinner, obviously, at the sports bar, obviously. <laughs> you know, baseball themed, and then it was kind of funny, because at the time when we were eating dinner at Sports Bar, one of my old friends recognized me from, like, I guess far away. She ran up and kind of scared me with this, like, K-pop reference thing, but then I didn't recognize her at first. She's like, wait, you know me? I'm like, oh my god, and I recognized her, and I was like, wait, hey, what? And she's like, of course you're cosplaying Dye's build 2019. I'm like, I will always cosplay Dye, to be honest, but it was just a fun, a fun time, and then I also got really excited because after dinner, I was going to go back to my hotel room to get some rest before Sunday, because I would leave on Sunday. But I bumped into this one slur cosplayer, you know, from the Lorax. Mm-hmm. And I got so excited, because I love the Lorax bill, and I feel like I haven't really seen people cosplaying from the Lorax for a few years now. That's mm-hmm. an older movie now. Yes, it's And it's not an anime. But I still love it. I still love Dr. Seuss. Like, I grew up without it when I was a little kid, right? So I'm just like, oh my god. I got really excited. And then I realized it's actually someone, like, a bunch of cosplay from online, too, and we ended up, like, switching hats, which is cute, <laughs> for, like, silly pictures. Hmm, that's and nice. And that was epic as well. And then, I, and then I had, and I was going to go, and I went back to the room change. I was going to go sleep, but then one of my friends was like, let's meet up, we haven't seen you all con. Like, you know how that happens sometimes when you're, like, trying to meet up with your friends, but everyone's, like, busy and running around doing stuff? Oh, I feel that. 
And then you're like, oh, but I feel like I need to see you before the con ends, right? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So like, Mood. <laughs> he, I know, like, I was leaving on Sundays at work on Monday, and he was like, oh, stay until, like, Monday. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to be here, like, that long tomorrow. So we met, we ended up meeting up really quick on the Saturday night, but it was really late. It was, like, 1 a.m., or after 1 a.m. even. So I was already, like, in casual clothes, like, no wig. I'm just wearing, like, a pink top and shorts, right? Like, like, sweatpants shorts, and not even, like, <laughs> and sneakers and she's just going full cosplay and I'm like oh my god I'm so impressed right now it's like the middle of the night but Katsukon's one of those cons but something's going on I think all day all night because in the gazebo area there were actual DJs oh wow that's interesting <laughs> yeah and it was like DJing music multiple DJs like different areas I guess when you're, you know how at the Katsukon when you go out there's different areas with different floors and stuff like there's the fountain level and then the gazebo level and all that the gazebo, it was a DJ playing music, and people were dancing and stuff, and, like, it was literally, like, a party going on, but not, like, at the con. It was, like, an unofficial thing in the hotel lobby. But the thing is, it was still only for con goers, though. The staff was always checking. Oh, that's so good. So, if you didn't have a badge, like, okay, so if you have a badge for the con, you can go into the con floor as well as the communal areas in the hotel. If you don't have a badge, you cannot be on the gazebo level or the atrium level or, like, you know, at the restaurant or anything unless you have a key card for the hotel room. That makes sense. So they checked, which they didn't do before, but before people had, like, lobby con, you know, in the other areas. Yeah, I've, I've oh, seen that go down, especially with um, some photographers who think they need to be there, but they, they don't have any badges. So, yeah, I've seen, like, people try to lobby con Katsukon, and it's just unfortunate that people will do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So now now that they're, they're cracking down that, it won't have, like, you know, random people running everywhere, but also... The thing is, I did hear this, even though it was really crowded, it's not as congested as it was, like, last time I was there. That's Probably good. because they're stricter now, but no lobby mm-hmm. conning. So it's either you had to be a legitimate person staying at the hotel, so you're, like, a hotel guest, right? Mm-hmm. Or a con goer, or both, right? So one or the other. But if you have a hotel key card, you cannot go to the convention floor, but you can go in, like, the communal areas, right? Like, the hotel areas. Which makes sense, honestly. You know, if you're paying for a con badge, you should, like, be the ones who can go into a con if you don't have a con badge. You shouldn't be allowed into that con era, right? Because then I'd be like, well, why did I pay for a badge? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that's within the right to do so. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. I mean, certain things, it's like, it makes sense because also with the lobby conning part of it, if you're a hotel tenant, of course, like, you're paying for the hotel, that you're allowed in the, that area. But if not, then you really shouldn't be here. So I thought that was good that they were getting more strict about it. And they were actually pretty uh, efficient about it, too. Like, it didn't feel like, checking for this stuff took too long it, everyone could get in and out pretty quickly that's good so just like just have it out and ready and you know con badge have that out you have to be have that out show the staff so that you can get in really quick but mm-hmm. yeah and then yeah so this i think that i don't know if that was there before maybe i just hadn't seen it late at night before but the gazebo djing stuff i think was new this year maybe yeah that sounds pretty new because i don't remember any of that going on when i was one of the years i used to go to Katsukon. yeah it was like oh if you don't want to go to like the con rave or anything like that, you can just party at the gazebo, which is actually nice because, you know, it's, like, well lit, it's still really bright there, you know, because everyone lights on and stuff. It's, and also, of course, people are still trying to photo shoot the gazebo during this time. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Everyone's, like, dancing, then people are still trying to get the gazebo photo shoots, too. At, like, 3 a.m., I'm telling you, at 3 a.m., I saw people still photo shooting. Oh, wow. That's, that's hardcore. So what I kind of music were they, they uh... I was, like, leaving to go to the elevator. I'm like, wow, people are still photo shooting at 3 a.m. So what kind of music were they DJing? Hmm? What kind of music were they DJing? Like, it was a lot of, like, pop and hip-hop stuff. Oh, wow. Like, a lot of dance music. It felt like it was a club, but not a club. It was, like, at the gazebo. Mm-hmm. It's, like, the gazebo club. Yeah, I think, club um, actually, a group that runs parties before, I think, Owa was there, and I think, I'm not sure if they're the ones who were DJing at the time I was there, but I know they had posted on their social media about doing that this year. Mm-hmm. So there were at least one of the groups doing it. Hmm. Which is nice. And then it's cool, too, that it's free. You know I mean? You don't have to pay a ticket to go. It's just, like, as long as you have either a badge or a key card for the hotel. Hmm. Yeah, so that's something new. And then, of course, that takes us to the last day, day three. Mm-hmm. Sunday. All right, let's uh, get this last day covered. Yeah, so Sunday fun day. That was, I honestly was kind of lazy that morning. I woke up, like, and was being lazy, you know, not wanting to go down really early, but I did make it down to con around, like, 10 a.m. or so-ish. Mm-hmm. And so, we went down, and I was coughing from Jamal from murder that day. Okay. And so, 
Jim always talks about, but it was her first time cosplaying. Jim and Tara, but we were both excited. Like, I can't believe people are still cosplaying this. What? And we were surprised to see other people. Because earlier in the weekend, we didn't see anyone. But I guess everyone decided who was going to cosplay DMMG to do it on Sunday. We saw a bunch of other people cosplaying from it, too. Which is really cool. And we had a quick photo shoot outside. And while we were outside, we saw something very interesting. Oh? From the top floor. So we were, like, standing outside. And we saw down by the water. There was someone who was in, like, a onesie. Like, a Takurumi. You know those onesie things? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what was happening, but... She was, like, screaming at random passerbys. What? <laughs> we don't know what was happening, but we feel like maybe he was, it was early in the morning, like, he can't be drunk right now, it's like, or maybe he is, I don't know, but it was, like, in the morning, he was, like, screaming at random people, and was, wow. like, it sounded like he was lecturing or something, but it what? wasn't, like, in the con, you know what I mean, so there's no staff there to be like, hey, stop it. Mm -hmm. It was outside, like, you know, right by the water, and a lot of cosplayers were there, like, photo shooting and stuff, he was, like, screaming at them, and we thought everyone handled it very well, people just kind of ignored him. Mm -hmm. You like don't be the fool's kind of thing. Yeah. Like, kept yeah. walking, or they kept doing a shoot, just ignoring him, pretending he wasn't there. But he was like yelling the entire time we were shooting. We could hear him yelling the whole time. Oh my god, that must have been annoying. And when we were leaving, he was still yelling, and we didn't, you know, it didn't have to do with the con. He was just screaming at random stuff about like it was just like conspiracy theory. I don't really know what was happening, but we were like, we don't know if he had gone kicked out of the con, maybe, and that's why he's yelling outside. But it's all this weird thing that that happens at a con, and you're like, why is this happening? Is this real life? It's like, wait, you kind of expect he's like. He's a con goer too. I saw he had a badge. Like, on, he had a badge on. Because you expect people who are like yelling and lecturing, like, right outside of a con to be like people who are not affiliated with fandom, but if it's someone who's like affiliated with fandom, like, okay, don't make us look bad. You no, know, he, he was clearly affiliated. He was wearing a giraffe onesie. A giraffe onesie. A giraffe cure me thing. Wow. And I know one of my friends is joking, oh, maybe it's Toys R Us being mad. <laughs> <laughs> There you I go. Oh no! I don't know. I actually did see yeah. someone costing as a Toys R Us giraffe when I was at Long Beach Comic Con. But someone did? Oh yeah, someone God. did. It was, it was like a full-on, like, fursuit. Oh my gosh, this, this was a onesie, but yeah, yeah, we were like, oh, I don't know what's happening. Let's just ignore him, it's fine. Good call. And then, um, yeah, it was kind of concerning. But, I mean, it, it's fine. We survived. He didn't actually, you know, hurt anyone. He was just, like, yelling. But, I mean, we wouldn't want that there, but it's kind of like, okay, let's ignore it. But I think um, another thing that, oh, okay, so after that, when I went back in, I went to a really cool anime and Jay fashion panel. Okay. And so I don't know if you know Avina K. So she's an anime and Jay fashion enthusiast, but she was presenting the panel with other co panelists. Oh, yeah, how'd that panel go? It was really, really cool. So it's kind of about like anime and Jay fashion, like if you like both, how to combine both of them. And so we're talking about the difference between things like cosplay Lolita versus being inspired Lolita Chords. It's like cosplay Lolita being something when a character either in canon is wearing Lolita fashion or a character doesn't wear it, but you want to reimagine that character to wear Lolita fashion. And so they gave examples of official art, like Quillet Magic, Middle of the Magic, but there's official art of them wearing Lolita dresses too. And then there's also certain things like you know, like Paradise Kiss when they have a J fashion references. Or like, you know, Princess Eye that has J fashion references in it. And then they talk about the other side when instead of cosplaying as character, you don't have to cosplay. You could also do a Lita Chord inspired by the character. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and they actually mentioned the Disney Bound is another thing that's kind of similar when you wear, like, an outfit inspired that may not necessarily be cosplay. Absolutely. And so for, for like, being inspired,